That's a double steric stack at like what? Five or six? Bounce the Italon. There's an Ugin, which is our main goal. Another Ugin. Oh, sure. Whatever. Oh, we should have scried it. I didn't realize uh, that we had another mutate stack. <laughs> uh, let's plus. Kill Elsad. Let's do that again. We still have 27 left. Why not? <laughs> Play right into a shatter. All right, we are keeping uh, the little guy for another plus. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thanks so much for taking a little time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. We're playing Magic the Gathering Arena, as always, playing Simic Mutate. Now this is a basically free-to-play deck. We've got some upgrades in there, but uh, nonetheless, it's 100% rotation proof. I showed you guys the free to play. Uh, it was Simic Mutate, but it had four colors in it. And this video blew up and I got a lot of requests for an upgraded guide. This is uh, pretty groovy and you should be able to push into Mythic with this. Uh, we've seen this list online pushing the top 800 Mythic. So, uh, you know, you'll get there. Just put in some time, learn how it works, learn the meta and you'll do just fine. So this is a very powerful Mutate deck that revolves around flooding the field with permanents and via auspicious sterics equal to the number of times the mutate stack has and it's also a stackable ability so if you get two sterics is on and you have five mutates on the stack you're going to be pulling out five and then five for ten permanents that's absolutely psycho um you know we also have ugin to flood the field we've got great plus abilities we don't like to minus because it kind of hurts our field but just to plus and even get to that minus 10 to gain life and flood the field even more is absolutely disgusting. And, uh, you know, potentially, worst case scenario, we're just ramping with our Migratory Greathorn and playing our Ugin organically, and that will win us the game. First Ugin played often wins the game. So if you found any value within this video, I really encourage you to give me a thumbs up just down below. It helps uh, boost the video's engagement and exposure to the world and uh, said business for this guy, right? So uh, I do appreciate all of the engagement on the video. You can go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well and share it to a friend. Uh, word of mouth is one of the greatest ways uh, for me to help grow this channel. So if you like the content here, you have fun hanging out with us, share it to a friend because chances are they will as well. We have got the gem giveaway, 350k gems left to give out. We've got monthly tournaments that are free entry cash prizes. So don't hold on, check out the discord, tell everybody about it and it'll be a great time. We're taking a look at the deck list in its entirety, breaking down each individual card. Then we're talking strategies and synergies. How do they all form a coherent archetype that's able to crush your opposition? And then we're going to look at some gameplay footage to learn how the deck not only works uh, in from theory in practice, uh, but then against the rest of the meta as well. Because it's not really enough to know how your deck works in on its own. You have to realize how it's going to interact with the rest of its environments or uh, the metagame, the other decks that it's going to be running into. Finally, we have my closing thoughts, any deck upgrades, channel, future plans, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Simic Mutate starts out with four copies of Gilded Goose. This is a 0-2 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. We can pay two plus tap it to create another food token. We can also tap it to sacrifice a food, adding one mana of any color. Two copies of Stormcoil Serpent. This is a 0-0 zero, zero for X, so it's a scaling card to be cast for zero. Uh, well, don't cast it for zero because it will automatically die, but it be could be cast for one all the way up to, you know, 99, however many mana you get. So it's really cool. It's always an applicable card within your hand because it helps you use all of your mana efficiently. Say you cast something for four, you've got two left. Boom, you can throw the Storm Coil out uh, as a 2-2 two -two, so you're not losing out on any spare mana. Not that mana burns a thing anymore, but uh, nonetheless, it's still a really advantageous move to be using your mana efficiently each turn. Into our two drops, we have the Elysian Cartrid. This is a 1-1 one, one in which we can tap to add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power four or greater, we will add two mana of any one color instead. Four copies of Polywag Symbiote. This is a 1-3. It has each creature you have uh, with Mutate will cost one less to cast. 
So this goes for the creature spell cost as well as the mutate spell cost. So a very cool spell reduction card here within our baby Godzilla. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. In our free-to-play version, we were discarding our instances and sorceries and then bringing them back with Lord Dracus. Uh, not going to be applicable here. There's no instances and sorceries. So just try to discard the land because you're going to be pulling a lot of land later on. And we've got some ramp as well. Three drops, three copies of our Sea Dasher Octopus, a 2-2 with flash. Mutate for two. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, uh, you know, this is our draw engine within the deck not that we really need one but uh it's a very cheap mutate it's also a flash blocker this can pick up a fervent champion uh you know i'm a big fan of that anyways into our four drops we have our gem razor a four four with reach and trample mutate for three whenever this creature mutates destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls Lucky Clover is on a rampage right now, so Gem Razor will help pick that up. You know, maybe any enchantments or shrines that they've got going on as well. So there is a lot of value and utility within Gem Razor. Migratory Greathorn, a 3-4, mutate for three. Whenever it mutates, search your library for a basic land card to put it into the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. This is how we will be ramping. Um, you know, we've got a little bit of ramp through the goose, the cartridge. The Great Horn is our main ramp engine. It is so good uh, just to flood the field with lands, take them out of your library so you're not going to be drawing them, etc., etc. Into our five drops, we have, I believe, four copies of Pouncing Shore Shark. This might be my favorite mutate creature. Yes, I love Sterix, but the Shore Shark is so good. A 4-3 with flash, and whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Woof. So it triggers the mutate stack, and it's going to push their creatures back to their hand. Four copies of Auspicious Sterics, a 6-6, mutate for six. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times that this creature has mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. Three copies of Ugin the Spirit Dragon, a legendary planeswalker coming in with seven loyalty, plus two. Ugin the Spirit Dragon deals three damage to any target, minus X. Exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors, so it's not exiling permanent uh, colorless things like, uh, you know, the enchantments, artifact creatures like Ginger Brute. Just be aware of that if you're new to the game. Minus 10, you gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. These spells are accompanied by two copies of Castle Vantress. We can pay five, scry two, five islands, three Castle Garen Briggs, pay five to add six mana, eight forests, four Temple of Mysteries, comes in tapped, scry one, and two Catcher Triomes. This is a red, blue, and green mana source. However, it comes in tapped. It is also a forest, island, and mountain, which is quite nice when activating our Castle Vantress and our Castle Garenbrick. No sideboard today. We're playing best of one, uh, and this deck slaps. We just talked about the deck list. If you've seen the free-to-play video, you know exactly how to operate this deck. But for those of you who are new, just checking this video out for the first time, maybe you've not played any Mutate decks, let's break it down for you. The main objective is to get to your Auspicious Sterex as quickly as possible. That's going to just accelerate your value light years ahead of your opponent, flooding the field with permanence. So on our route there, it's most ideal if we build our Mutate stack up. This means getting a Goose out on our turn one. It could mean putting Sea Dasher Octopus on turn two, Great Horn on it turn three, and then I think... Uh, with the ramp that that provides, we should potentially be able to Sterix uh, as early as turn four and potentially on turn five at the very latest. Um, and then it will already have two mutates. The Sterix will be the third. You flood the field with three permanents, um, you know, and by this point you have six permanents on the field or creatures anyways. It should be, hopefully, you get permanents out with your Sterix or creature permanents out with your Sterix. Um, they are always permanents, whether they're lands or uh, creatures the instances and sorceries go to the grave which we don't have in this deck so they will always be permanents but what i mean to say is hopefully that they're creatures to go wide and then your opponent doesn't have many defenders they don't have their field wipe no shatter of the skies and we just crush our opponent in so as quickly as possible ramp build your mutate stack get to your sterics crush your opponent easy as that we have trample through our gem razor we have flying uh really on our gilded goose is the only thing so that's our two forms of evasion so we really want to be mutating onto our gilded goose 
or you know onto our serpent which organically has trample as well the sterics as a 6-6 is cool however without the flying without the trample it's not as good and we want to finish our opponent off as quickly as possible to keep them from drawing their field wipe and to keep us from milling ourselves so that's it i you know i could go more in depth with it push your opponent's blockers back with the shore shark you know you can also bounce their attackers uh which is great because you can trigger your auspicious hysterics on their uh, attack phase and you can flood the field with blockers and then do a really nice block on them that they weren't expecting which is fun there's uh you know the draw engine from the octopus that you could put on the flyer or the trample you shouldn't really need it the only reason you're using the draw engine is to either draw your sterics or to activate your sterics's mutate stack ability again right so that's it there's not much to it it's a very friendly beginner deck flood the field into sterics attack your opponents if you can't win that way use ugin and you'll be able to win the game surely with him so that was the deck list this was the deck tech there's no sideboard guide today so it's really easy before we start breaking down today's gameplay footage, I have to remind you I'm live on YouTube every morning at 6 a.m. at 7 or 7.30 right after the YouTube live ends. We switch to Twitch for 3 to 8 hours and then we're back at 6 p.m. on YouTube again for another hour and a half potentially. So no matter what time of the day it is for you, come check us out. It is Mountain Standard Central. If you don't want to do the conversions, I have a link tree link below this video. Click that. It will show you the YouTube and the Twitch. Click on those. You can subscribe and follow the channels. And then you're just going to be notified. You don't have to do any silly uh, time conversions, which in my opinion is just as bad as blocking math, right? <laughs> so enjoy this video today, you guys. Uh, you know, Auspicious Sterics is a great deck for beginners to get into. You've seen the free to play guide. This is the upgraded guide. Hit that standard 2021 event and smash your opponents all the way into Mythic. Before we take off, huge shout out to our financial support on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube for making all of this possible for you guys. So uh, be sure to thank them when you see them within the chats, etc, etc. Okay, take care, enjoy. Don't forget to watch to the end so you don't miss out on my closing thoughts. Two lands not great. Um, no, we do have the card trick though. Castle Vantress first, so we can play our Car Caratrid. Woof. Let's take the Scry. Well, the Octopus is not bad. Let's keep it. Ooh, an Eidolon. So we know what that means. We got that enchantment deck, which is stacked full of removal. And, uh, you know, we're going to see a Myers Grasp, um, dead weight, right? It's n not going to be pleasant. So we have to pray that we can avoid that. Lurus. Okay, so, you know, we are going to escape the dead weight and the Myers Grasp at least, and unless they're doubling down on it. We have no blockers as the thing, right? Because we're tapped. But I still think that's fine. We can pull an island. And then we can play our Castle Ventress. We have Shore Shark to bounce this Jazz. And we've got two Sterixes, so... Hmm. It's going to be interesting. Ooh. <laughs> Demonic Embrace on the Sterix. That's crazy. So we have to bounce for four. One, two, three, four. And we have one, two. So we can uh, bounce. And then Octopus and then bounce again. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We could just go straight Sterix, but we're going to need to get rid of that... Uh, that little Luris there, so let's pass our turn. Throw it a nice. It is nice. It's very good. The protection could, uh, yeah. So before he can give the Luris protection, we have to bounce it. That's tapped his white mana, so there's no uh, Commander's Blessing. Nothing like this. 
We're gonna go under, just so it can dodge Myers Grass still. Bouncing Lurus, and we get the land. Another mutate, please and thank you. Under, we get another land, and we get to bounce this Italon. Shore Shark is so good. I love pouncing Shore Shark. Let's go in. If they have instant speed removal here, I'm gonna die. Over top. Let's bounce the savior. Land doesn't matter. That's a lot of land. Um, so this would tap for two mana, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Still doesn't, uh, it's the creature, not the mutate. Let's just play our goose. And we can hit for six. Down to 22, we get to draw and even play. They need a planes and a shatter. Eidolon negates the Shatter. There's the dead weight for the draw. Double Sterix is going to be pretty tasty. The Blessing, okay. We're pulling it from their hand, though, is, is the main goal here. That's a double Steric stack at, like, what, five or six? Bounce the Idolon. There's an Ugin, which is our main goal. An opportunity to Another Ugin. Oh, sure, whatever. Oh, we should have scryed it. I didn't realize uh, that we had another mutate stack. <laughs> oh, let's plus. Kill Elsad. Let's do that again. We still have 27 left. Why not? <laughs> Play right into a shatter. All right, we are keeping uh, the little guy for another plus. My flames burn beyond perception. Let's hit for six. Ah, pulling that land. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Seems fair and playable, right? Played our whole deck. <laughs> Ah, Myers Grass for the draw. For what good is removal? Take our Scry too. Asterix. <laughs> Mail ourselves, that would be fun. Let's snag that. <laughs> no hexproof needed. Hand looks pretty good. Three lands, Ugin. I mean, not any ramp, but. Yeah, right? I love the Sea Dasher. Woo! Mono red. Awesome. Awesome! 
You know I love that. Hopefully locked on land. Yes. Pass, flash the octopus onto it to give it blocking potential. Yep. Unless they have a shock. That would make me so sad. No way. At least we trade. Let's get another blocker up. Well, at four, playing to five. Nice, Annex. The Shore Shark's great. It sucks, but it's worth it. We get to kill the Ginger Brute and the Annex, and we have our blocker. Gem Razor is so oh, good. No attacks. We're gonna bounce these tokens with the shark. I hope. Robber. Gross. They can cleave, but I'm still taking the robber. And he wants to trade. Not bad, not bad. We have no creature to Shore Shark with. One, two, three, four, five. This is six. And this is sad. I don't think we'll get Uganote in time. Nice. Just putting it onto Annex though, it's like, oh, what do we do even? Of course, there's that mutate card that we talked about. Up to 10, 3, 6, not dropping Ugin. Cry. Hit for 10 here, good game. All right, Mono Red gets us. Not really surprising, Mono Red gets most people on uh, about 60% of the time. <laughs> not a great hand, not a bad hand. Okay, mono blue mill. That's not good. That is very good against us, right? Because we already thin our library, like, aggressively, right? So Sterix becomes a lot less useful in this matchup. It's a blocker, plus it makes things cheaper.
Gross. And the mill begins. Three sterics in hand, which is nice. But I think we should still go for it a little bit and then just hit him with the aggro town. This costs four to activate. No attacks. Three, four, five, dropping six, Sterics in play. We're still at 44. I think we can get away with it. We just want to be careful about it, right? And we do have to kill them. We have to do damage. We may just want to spread these Sterics out. What, six cards here, right? That's not good. Oh no, all creatures too. Get rid of the tutelage. That helps a lot. Another tutelage. We can Sterix onto it. We're at 36. Not good. The draw doesn't mill us though, right? That's what we need. We need to skip that mill. Okay. Creature, blocker, baby mills. If we used our Castle Garenberg last turn, I'm pretty sure we could have got a Sterics in play. Can you use the Garenbrig for the Mutates? I think so. Down to 30, yikes. Oh, um, yeah, just play as a creature. Let's go wide. We get Shore Shark, but I don't really want him just milling. The trample on this Sterix is good, so maybe we will push out the Shark. And I'm sure there's just a Chump block here. We're at 26. That's risky biscuits. They're at 16. We can hit for 10 next turn. Nice. Hopefully no land. Down to 24. Ah, there's the land. Keeper, that's okay. As long as there's no draw. So again, we're killing the tutelage right away. Flooding the field. Opt is fine. We don't want to flood too much. We may need to stop after this. I just wanted the trample and to kill the, the tutelage mostly. Under. Tutelage is gonzo. Two lands. Let's just attack, right? I don't want to mill anymore. And we're going to play the Sterix just as a creature. Pay for six, down to 10, lethal next turn. I think we've been able to manage our library to the point where we've not milled ourselves. 
and uh, you know we've got that field presence to deal with our opponent. We've also got rid of these tutelages as soon as they've entered the play, um, which has been really, really helpful. Another one. And they've not been able to stack. He would have three of them on the board, right? And that's where that deck really gets out of control is when they can start stacking some of that mill value. game. Ooh, I was worried there. I was like, oh no, we mill ourselves and he's milling us? This can't be good. But it's a key part of winning to determining what you're actually playing against right away and then forming a strategy against it. Opponent goes first. Land looks great. Hands pretty groovy. Typically we free cast Ugin with our Sterix, but I mean, we can discard it with our baby Godzilla. So no complaints here. In with the goose. Triumphs scare me, right? Team Air is in such a good place. Adventures is so strong. We don't really need the draw. We just need the ramp. Three, four, five next turn. Not that we really need it. No mutate on board other than our octopus. We could make the most out of our goose, I guess. I'm worried about the bone crusher, right? Innkeeper. Okay. He's going to hold up bone crusher. Gross. Let's go as wide as we can. We can mutate this on for one. Just takes the draw. We might do it. He's tapped. I think we're going to do it. That way we're guaranteed getting a nice draw. No attacks. Let's toss baby Godzilla. Keeping Ugin to build into. One, two, three... Four, five. Let's take our draw. The gem razor. I don't mind that. Let's take our scry. Great horn's good. I would love to kill the artifact that he drops, so I'm I'm gonna leave it. I know that's probably not good of us. Or do we just mutate next turn? Yes. Let's push up our little dude. We'll toss the Garenbrig because the Great Horn can pull a land for us. Taking us longer to get there, but I still think it's worth it.
And I guess we could actually just go for it right now. We'll pull more Mutate. Oh, we have to get rid of Ugin. We need the Sterix underneath. We pull the land, so Sterix is operational next turn. We've got two here, one here. I might put it on the creature with flying. Right? It saves our dasher from, you know, the Bone Crusher Giant. So if he drops an artifact or enchantment, we go gem raiser. If not, we go sea dasher. Ooh, 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 ooh. Fate to the sideboard. Out of mana. At least we get to see what he's looking for. Storm's Wrath. Gross. Sterix is cool, that stays on the field. And we can mutate onto the Sterix again. But I think we're going to save that for after the Storm's Wrath. Thirty-nine. All that we have that survives the Storm's Wrath is the Sterix, and there's two of them in play, so I really feel no need to go any deeper than that. Let's just hold off. Try to bait them into cleaning the field. One, two, three, four creatures they get. And they are left with only a questing beast. So it's not worth it. Like, the value for them to do that is actually in our favor. Bay for the double draw. Okay. Good game. Alrighty. You know, we've got the Gilded Goose. We go first. We don't have turn one land, though. It's fine. Right, this is such a nice looking hand, other than kind of the mishap off the out of the gate. The Triome activates the Garenbrig, which is nice. The Shark, if they play some shenanigans, we need to get rid of the Gem Razor, same reason. If not, uh, again, we just keep pushing in. They could have an Eliminate or something. We'll still get the Great Horn. That's up to them. It could be Heart's Desire, because it doesn't have tokens. They would get a 2 for 1 if that's a Heart's Desire. That makes us so sad. Let's grab the land. Take our hit. Here comes the removal. It is a borrower. Not the worst. Back to our hand. Much better than the graveyard. Plenty of Mutate, looking for Hysterics. Slitherwisp, yeah, it's annoying, but I think we should be able to survive. They've got removal. 
sad. <laughs> right? Let's try to test said removal. We'll still take the 4-4. Four four. Probably Heart's Desire, which just makes us so sad. We had another land, though. A Sea Dasher? What? We should have taken the draw with the octopus. Um, a little mistake there. I hope it doesn't cost us. Let's trade with the wisp. It's a draw engine for him. And then it's going to pull the threat away from our gem raiser. Because all we need is the mutate stack for hysterics. That's the important part. Were we not allowed to block there? Let's take the scry. Garenbrake can go to the bottom. Let's take a gem razor on the octopus. Over. We hit for eight here. We also have uh, the flash bounce. It's a borrower for them, I think. Really? That's strange. Um, under. Let's grab the additional land here. Let's bounce the shark back. Take the land. Good hit, good hit, good hit. Down to eight. We get to draw as well. Another octopus. Not the worst. Doing pretty good here without even hysterics. Rankle's gonna make a sack. We discard our gem razor and we kill the stack. Hmm. I'm sure Rankle will go, and they'll just replace it. Oof, here comes that removal we've been thinking about the whole time. <laughs> Maybe Godzilla in case we have to flash. Sure. We still have Trample. Underneath.
As far as bouncing something goes, you know, the Slither Wisp costs a lot more, so I think we'll let them mitigate the little bit of damage. And we'll bounce those two cards back to their hand. If they don't block, we're bouncing the Vandal as well. Actually, cancel. Oh, uh, Zed. Wrong land. Scare and break up. Go in for El Mutato, which is the shark bounce. Scrap the land. Um, over top, so it's stronger. Let's bounce the Vandal. More land is good. And then we could play this for four. Perfecto. They have a huge hand. <laughs> right? So even if they have removal, we have enough board presence that they will need to use like a ritual of soot or something, um, which doesn't get our great horn. Good game. Alrighty, Simic Mutate is a beast! You know, I have loved Auspicious Sterics ever since I seen it enter the spoilers. I was like, this card's busted, flooding the field with permanents. It's stackable, um, and I've made so many Mutate decks, and I love it every single time. I get burnt out on the cycle, but the Mutate deck is always fun for me. There's just something about lifting up that library and just throwing things onto the field. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to show that this deck doesn't need Hexproof to survive, to thrive, in fact. We've abandoned it, you know? If they've got removal, fine, restart, throw the engines on again. Just play smart, don't put everything on the field at once, save some creatures in your hand to get you going again. Uh, try to finish these matches as quick as possible. Don't mill yourself, um, you know, watch the video again. Memorize all my misplays, because those are probably going to be common misplays that you see as a reoccurring thought or pattern, whatever. Uh, you know, with all that out of the way, we're live every morning, 6 a.m. on YouTube, 7 to 7.30 on Twitch, right after YouTube ends, and then back 6 p.m. on YouTube again. Uh, so all day, Mountain Center Central, just follow the channel so you don't have to do the time conversion. Uh, you know, big shout out to all of our financial support. Twitch Patreon, on YouTube, you guys know who you are. Uh, the community loves you for making this a reality for not only me, but for them as well. Um, you know, the majority of the feedback has been really good on the channel. Uh, and it is my pleasure to help, uh, you know, people new to Magic the Gathering Arena. You know, maybe the experts don't get a lot of uh, information here that's viable. Just uh, some good laughs at my misplays. But uh, for the average player, and especially the new player, this is a great place for you to be. Welcome, I'm happy to have you, and I hope you're ready to play the last game you'll ever play. Take care, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.